At Stillwater's Church, we're studying the book of Revelation, and the title of the series is called The Lamb, the Lion, and the Warrior King. And this past Sunday, I talked about uh, the theme, the foundation that we have to have in order to understand the book of Revelation and uh, the ability to be blessed by it. And the title of the message was this, It's All About Jesus. And so that's a very important theme uh, for us to be able to understand the book Revelation. Now, what I'm doing in addition, each week, I'm giving a supplemental video that will help you discover something interesting or important about uh, the book of Revelation. So today, we're going to talk about what eschatology is. Now, the word eschatology simply means things to come or the end things, the study of the end times. And so um, the scripture begins this way in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning. Well, if there's a beginning, there must be an end. And so that's what eschatology is. And you and I are all very interested in eschatology. We want to know what's going to happen next. We want to know what will happen tomorrow. If we could, we like reading about the weather or watching about the weather. And so eschatology is something that's very interesting to us. So um, eschatology is commonly divided into two different parts. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. There is what is called personal eschatology and general eschatology. Personal uh, being that it deals with you. General mean, means basically that it deals with everybody. So let's talk about uh, eschatology being the study of things to come, uh, the things that are yet to happen, uh, and let's look at personal eschatology and how that applies to you. Well, uh, there are several aspects of personal eschatology. There's death, there's the resurrection from the dead, uh, there's hell, heaven, eternal life, and judgment. These are things that deal with personal eschatology. Well, let's talk about death. Romans 5.12 says, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world, and Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone has sinned. So we see that death is a natural result of Adam and Eve's sin. So everyone is going to die physically. Uh, that's the first death. We'll talk about the second death in a moment. And then in Hebrews 9.27, it says, Just as each person is destined to die once, and after that comes the judgment. So personal eschatology involves death. All of us are interested in what happens after death, life after death. Uh, what does this life mean? Um, and, you know, death, what we all have been to funerals, we all know that that is a part of life. And so death is a part of personal eschatology. And here's the second thing, uh, is the resurrection from the dead. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 53 says this. The Apostle Paul wrote this. He said, I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this imperishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. So we see death. Every person will experience death unless you're alive when Jesus Christ comes again and you're a believer. Um, uh, resurrection from the dead. Believers will be resurrected uh, to live forever with Christ. We'll read in Revelation 20 that non-believers will also be resurrected, not to a resurrected body uh, like Christians will have, but they will be put into the lake of fire. So uh, there's death, there's the resurrection from the dead, and then there's hell, uh, heaven, eternal life, and the final judgment. Let me read you a couple passages. Revelation 20, verses 11 to 15, it says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was, no, uh, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in their books. The sea gave up the dead which were in it, the, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, 
and they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So when a person dies without Christ, a a non-believer, um, the Bible teaches that their eternal destiny is hell, or more accurately, the lake of fire. That's the eternal place of eternal destruction and the second death. So we see there's death, there's resurrection from the grave, there's hell, heaven, uh, eternity, and judgment will stand before God. And let's read about what happens to believers. Uh, Revelation 21 verses 1 to 4. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. That is actually the very definition of heaven that we will dwell with God, that God will make his abode with us and we'll be with him forever. And God himself will be with them as their God and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. So that's personal eschatology that every person's got to deal with. Remember, eschatology now is the study of things to come, the things that are in the future, the things that have not happened yet. And so let's look now at general eschatology. Uh, There's really no way to deal with this subject so vast. We can't deal with it in a very short period of time. So I'm just going to give you some definitions and tease out some things that I'm going to talk about in future videos. Okay, so general eschatology concerns several things. First of all, it concerns the return of Jesus Christ, the second coming of Christ. This is actually in two parts. Now, we will discover that uh, there are differing beliefs on what is called the rapture and the second coming. There's really two schools of thought on that. Uh, Some believe that the rapture happens separately from the second coming, and it's separated by seven years of tribulation we find in the book of Revelation. So you've got rapture, tribulation, and then the return of Christ and the millennial reign of Christ. Then there are others that believe that the rapture and the second coming are a simultaneous event. And this is based on uh, what is written in scripture that was a very common tradition in the days that the New Testament was written, that a delegation, when a king was coming to a city or some uh, royal person or some very uh, big dignitary was coming to a city, a delegation would go out and meet this dignitary and come back into the city. So that's kind of what the idea of the rapture is based on. The fact that we will, uh, that are alive on this earth will be caught up with Christ. And then those that are uh, buried and dead, they, they will be resurrected from the grave and then they'll come back with Jesus Christ. So uh, that's the rapture and the second coming. The second part of general uh, eschatology is the tribulation. Now, once again, I will deal with this at a later date, but I'm just kind of giving you definitions now of what this is. Um, in the book of Revelation, it does describe a tribulation, and part of it is called the Great Tribulation. Now, there are multiple schools of thought on this. Some people believe this is a literal seven years that happens between the rapture and the second coming of Christ. There are others that believe that this happens before the second coming of Christ, uh, and that the church will go through this. And there's a lot of biblical evidence on both sides, and there are many wonderful, good, Bible-believing Christians that believe one or the other of these um, positions. There are several positions on the tribulation, but it refers to the, the tribulation in the book of Revelation that refers to those seven years of tribulation, which could be metaphorical as far as it's not an actual seven years. Um, it could be a literal seven years, uh, and it could be that the church goes through it or that the church does not go through it, according to which position you believe. And we'll talk about that uh, in future videos. And then the other part of uh, the ma- one of the major parts of eschatology is the millennial reign of Christ. 
Now, the word millennial means 1,000. And so in Revelation, it talks about that when Christ returns, that there will be a uh, reign that he has on this earth for a 1,000 years where he will put things back to their original order, where he will fulfill the mandate uh, in the Old Testament to uh, remove the curse. And uh, so uh, it's a 1,000 years. Now, once again, there are many different three major different ones that I'll discuss in a later video. Uh, there's uh, those that believe that this is a literal 1,000 year reign, literally uh, on the earth. There are others that believe that this refers to the church age. Uh, others believe this is kind of a golden age that leads up to the point when Christ does come back. Um, and because of the gospel, that things get better and better. And so we'll discuss those uh, positions at a later date. And then finally, there's eternity. Now, this is a major part of eschatology because it does not end. It's eternal. And John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Well, you're going to live somewhere forever. You're going to either live in heaven with God or you're going to experience the second death described in the book of Revelation and be in the lake of fire, separated from God for eternity. And we'll talk about hell and we'll talk about what that means and, uh, and, and everything in a future video. So uh, anyway, I want you to think about things to come. Jesus could come back today. We need to live and be ready, live like he could come back today and be ready for his return. God bless you. I love you. I hope you'll join me this Sunday uh, at uh, Stillwater's Church. We're going to be talking about uh, the book of Revelation again. And I'm going to talk about how to recapture, rekindle your first love. Revelation chapter 2, it talks about the church at Ephesus. You don't want to miss this. I think it's going to be very helpful, helpful for you. God bless you. I love you. And we'll see you this Sunday.